Australia can rightly be called a land of contrasts. It is home to beautiful beaches, impenetrable wild jungles, vast deserts, and even its own Alps. Within this magnificent natural environment and its many wild areas are hidden numerous mysteries and secrets. In this video, I invite you to discover the most amazing and unusual finds from Australia. Enjoy watching. When it comes to Australia, many people think about the large number of giant insects and spiders that live on the continent. And it's true. One of the representatives of Australia's giants is the wood moth Endoxyla cinereus. Australians are used to encountering such insects, so they approach them without fear, take pictures, shoot videos, and even pick them up. For tourists, however, even meeting this moth can be a cause for a good scare. This wood moth is the heaviest moth in the world. Its body length exceeds that of an adult man's hand, its wingspan can reach up to 23 centimeters, and it weighs as much as 30 grams. It's worth noting that the weight of fairly large moths usually averages around 10 grams. Looking at Indoxila, you might think it's very voracious. But in fact, adult individuals do not eat anything at all. They use up the energy and nutrients they accumulated while they were caterpillars. By the way, the size of these moth caterpillars is also impressive. Moreover, they have very powerful jaws that allow them to chew through eucalyptus bark, turning it into dust. Another surprising fact is that females of this species are so heavy that they cannot fly. They spend their short lives sitting on a tree and waiting for a male who, unlike the females, can fly. There is no need to fear these moths, as they are completely harmless. In this photo, you can see the most famous property in Sydney. The plot of land looks truly unusual with its green lawn and neat house facades standing out against the backdrop of the typical grey houses surrounding it. The plot belongs to the Zamet family and is a piece of real estate that practically all developers in Sydney are after. The family has lived there for a very long time. According to the Zamets, there used to be many such beautiful large plots like theirs in the area. However, when developers started offering large sums of money for these plots, the neighbors agreed to sell their property. The Zamet family, however, refused. While construction around their house was in full swing, the family received numerous lucrative offers from developers eager to acquire their land. But the owners remained steadfast, continuously rejecting the offers. Astonishingly, offers are still being made to this day, and the Zamets continue to refuse. The most recent offer for the five-acre plot was 50 million Australian dollars, equivalent to 33 million US dollars. But the family also turned it down, explaining that they enjoy living on their land and have no plans to move. In 2021, residents of the Australian town of Broome, located in Western Australia, began complaining about being attacked by drunken red-winged parrots. But how is that possible, you might ask? Did the birds really start drinking alcohol? The answer, both yes and no. The problem was that Australia had a very hot summer in 2021. By the end of the season, not all fallen mangoes were collected. Under the scorching sun, the fruits began to rot and ferment, and their juice started turning into a kind of wine. The parrots were delighted to taste the sweet fermented mango juice and pulp, but how could they have known that such a treat would affect their behavior? Under the influence of alcohol, the birds became drowsy and confused. They couldn't figure out where to fly, where their home was, or where danger lay. As a result, they flew into the town, crashed into house windows, fell on people's heads, and ultimately became prey for cats and other predators. Some of the birds consumed so much fermented juice that they suffered fatal poisoning. Fortunately, some of the birds that ended up in the town were saved by local veterinarians. Our planet has many beaches that are stunningly beautiful. Pink beaches transport you to a fairy tale, while snow white ones take you straight to paradise. But there are also beaches that aren't made of sand or pebbles. A striking example of such a unique place is Shell Beach. Looking at this beach from afar, it seems to be made of snow white sand. But upon closer inspection, you realize that it is actually made up of billions of tiny shells. 
This amazing place is located on the western coast of Australia, on the shores of the Azure Bay Laharadon Bight, within the territory of Australia's Shark Bay National Park. Shark Bay, where this extraordinary beach is located, is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. There are only two such shell beaches in the world, the second of which is located on the island of St. Barthelemy. However, Shell Beach stands out with its sheer volume of shells, stretching over 60 kilometers with a shell layer that can reach up to 10 meters in thickness. But why are there so many shells here? It turns out that the waters near Shark Bay have a high concentration of salt. Such water is uninhabitable for most marine predators, allowing shells to thrive and multiply without obstacles. Of course, all these shells are underwater, but after storms, they are washed ashore. Surely, each of you has seen earthworms at some point in your life. Some may have seemed quite large, but none of them can compare to the giant Australian earthworm, Megascalides. Australis, also known as the Gippsland earthworm, is the largest subterranean invertebrate animal on the planet. It lives exclusively in the rural area of Gippsland, in the state of Victoria. The length of an adult worm, which usually lives to about nine years, can reach up to three meters, it certainly looks intimidating, but it poses no threat to humans or animals. In fact, the expansion of agriculture in these areas has brought this species to the brink of extinction. These worms choose clayey and moist soil near bodies of water as their home. The entire southern region of Gippsland was once covered in dense forests, but this changed with the arrival of farmers. Most of the trees were cut down, and the land was constantly plowed, which undoubtedly affected the Gippsland earthworm population. This species is now under special protection, and Australians are trying to help preserve it. An annual international festival is even held in honor of this animal. In 2023, while patrolling Conway National Park, rangers stopped their vehicle by the roadside to let a snake cross the road. When they got out of the car, they noticed a cane toad sitting in the bushes nearby. Cane toads are a common species in Australia, so spotting them in the wild is quite frequent. However, the rangers were very surprised by this individual because it was incredibly huge. The toad weighed over 2.5 kilograms, while the average weight for this species rarely exceeds one kilogram. Due to its size, the rangers nicknamed this female toad Toadzilla. Cane toads were introduced to Australia in 1935 to control cane beetles that were destroying sugarcane. The toads managed to deal with the pests quite well because they are voracious. However, they found the humid tropical climate of northern Australia's forests to be so ideal that they began actively increasing their population. It is not surprising, given that a single female cane toad can produce more than 3,000 eggs. Such fertility has become a real problem for other animals, as cane toads are poisonous at every stage of their life cycle, from egg to adult. Their poison affects larger animals, and their victims include not only insects and scorpions, but also small rodents and birds. The Grand Canyon is the deepest canyon in the world, located on the Colorado Plateau in the U.S. state of Arizona. Australia also has a very deep canyon that is only 250 meters shallower than the Grand Canyon. This amazing natural wonder is called King's Canyon. King's Canyon is located in the central part of Australia within Watarika National Park. The area is completely wild and uninhabited, and the nearest settlement is more than 300 kilometers away. However, this does not deter tourists who want to enjoy the fantastic local scenery. Although King's Canyon is often compared to the Grand Canyon, there is actually a part of the Grand Canyon in Australia as well, specifically on the island of Tasmania. But how is this possible, given that the distance between Tasmania and Arizona is over 14,000 kilometers? Scientists were just as surprised as you might be when, in 2018, they discovered that the composition of ancient rock found on the island of Tasmania was identical to that of the rock in the American Grand Canyon. After numerous studies, they concluded that about 1.5 billion years ago, present-day Tasmania and the Grand Canyon were part of the ancient continent Rodinia. 
The existence of this continent had previously been unconfirmed, but this discovery provides irrefutable proof that it did indeed exist and broke apart about a billion years ago. Amber is a type of golden resin from ancient coniferous trees, which has been used since ancient times. Archaeologists have found amber artifacts at sites where people lived about 12,000 years ago. This material was also widely used in ancient Egypt, both for making jewelry and for mummification. To this day, this mineraloid continues to attract people with its beauty and brightness. It also holds great value for scientists, as some amber specimens preserve moments from the lives of ancient inhabitants of our planet. As is known, prehistoric animals are sometimes found in amber, trapped in resin millions of years ago and preserved for eternity. Among such rare finds, there are truly unique ones. In 2020, in the Australian state of Victoria, amber was discovered containing two flies. Amazingly, they were trapped in the resin during mating. Usually, fly mating happens very quickly, in just a few seconds, making this amber specimen truly unique. By the way, the age of this find is around 41 million years. Such amber specimens help scientists look into the distant past and gather information about the features of prehistoric ecosystems. Back in 1913, during excavations at the bottom of a lake in a remote region of South Australia, scientists discovered the skull of an ancient giant bird previously unknown to science. Unfortunately, the skull was severely damaged and literally crumbled to dust during an attempt to transport it to a laboratory. However, despite this failure, the discovery was still recorded by scientists, and the bird was named Newton's Thunderbird, in honor of the English ornithologist Alfred Newton. More than a century later, paleontologists decided to revisit the lake's bottom in hopes of finding another specimen of this prehistoric bird's bones, and they were lucky. This time the remains found were so well preserved that scientists were able to determine that the bird had died after twisting its leg and being unable to escape the water. Additionally, experts were finally able to reconstruct the appearance of the ancient bird. Newton's Thunderbird stood about 2 meters tall and weighed over 230 kilograms. Its beak resembled that of a goose, and it had a protrusion above it, which was used for communication with other birds of its kind. These birds mainly fed on fruits, berries, and young grass. Genetically, Thunderbirds are most closely related to modern screamers, which live in South America. Indigenous peoples of all countries, without exception, have numerous legends that they pass down through generations. Some of these tell of mythical creatures that supposedly inhabit their lands. For Australian Aboriginal people, such a character is the Bunyip monster. Remarkably, stories of this evil creature are told by all native Australians, although its name and description may vary depending on the tribe. In the 18th century, Aboriginal accounts were so convincing that Bunyip was considered a real animal by colonizers. Today, it is considered real only by cryptozoologists, although scientists don't rule out the possibility that the prototype for Bunyip could have been a giant ancient marsupial, Diprotodon, which the ancestors of Aboriginal people might have seen with their own eyes. There are about nine different descriptions of the monster, although only two are the most common. According to the first, the Bunyip resembles a huge dog with a round head, similar to a bulldog's. Its body length is about one and a half meters, and it's covered in thick, dark fur. According to the second popular description, the Bunyip has a very long neck, a horse-like head, and its body length can reach up to 40 meters. In all versions of the monster's description, it lives exclusively in swamps, behaves aggressively, and is ready to attack any unfamiliar living creature that approaches its lair. It might sound surprising, but scientists are still discovering new species of dinosaurs previously unknown to science. One such species was discovered in Australia. On a summer day in 2004, Australian paleontologist Robin McKenzie, along with her husband Stuart, was driving cattle near their land around the town of Aromanga in southwestern Queensland. Suddenly, she noticed that giant bones of some creature were sticking out of the ground. Naturally, she immediately reported the find to her colleagues, 
and large-scale excavations began at the site. After extensive research on the remains, scientists confirmed that Robin had made a sensational discovery. She had found bones of a previously unknown species of giant dinosaur belonging to the Titanosaur family. The dinosaur was named Australotitan cooperensis, or simply Cooper. This dinosaur had a long neck, a length of about 30 meters, and a height of about 6 meters. It lived in what is now Australia around 92, 96 million years ago. To date, Cooper is the largest known dinosaur in Australia. Today we know many cryptids whose existence remains unproven. The most famous of them are, of course, the Yeti and the Loch Ness Monster. Many people don't believe in their reality. But did you know that in the 19th century, scientists similarly didn't believe in the platypus? Yes, it sounds strange, but it really happened. The platypus was first discovered in the late 18th century during the colonization of the Australian state of New South Wales. Back then, explorers found the dead body of this animal and sent it to England. There, it was studied by botanist and zoologist George Shaw. Understandably, Shaw was astonished to see such an unusual creature with a body resembling a mole or beaver and a duck-like bill. Initially, Shaw thought it was a masterful work by a taxidermist who had attached a bill to a mammal's face and he began looking for seams on the skin. However, all his efforts were in vain and no evidence could be found to suggest that the animal had been artificially created. This skepticism from scientists wasn't unfounded as taxidermists at the time often created hoaxes of mythical creatures, like mermaids, joining parts of monkeys and fish. So, any unknown creature was always thoroughly examined. Extensive studies of the platypus carcass eventually confirmed that this animal was indeed real. However, that didn't solve the problem, as scientists struggled to classify the platypus. Female platypuses lacked mammary glands, but all individuals of the species had a cloaca, like birds and reptiles, meaning their offspring hatched from eggs. But later, thanks to the German biologist Meckel, it was found that mammary glands did exist, and the young were fed with milk, even though they hatched from eggs. Ultimately, platypuses were classified as aquatic mammals and became the only members of the platypus family. Like echidnas, they belong to the monotreme order, mammals with features reminiscent of reptiles. This unique animal is an endemic species to Australia, which is why it was chosen as a symbol of the country. We all know that bees and bumblebees can produce honey, but it turns out that some species of ants can do this as well. Ant honey has a more liquid consistency compared to bee honey, and ants do not store it in combs. Surprisingly, the storage place for this sweet delicacy is the abdomens of the ants themselves. The source of raw material for ant honey is not flowers, as it is for bees, but insects capable of producing sugary secretions, particularly aphids. Ants literally milk them by tapping on their abdomens and sucking the sweet liquid. Once they have filled themselves with the nectar, they return to the anthill, where they remain in a hanging position until their fellow ants need nourishment. Members of this honey-producing caste are called honey barrels. Interestingly, the honey inside their abdomens is not processed or spoiled, but truly stored, like in barrels. Honey ants represent a whole group of different ant species capable of producing honey. They are found in North America, Africa, Malaysia, and Australia, and each of these species is unique in its own way. For example, in Australia there are Campanotus inflatus ants that can produce medicinal honey. Scientists decided to test this honey on different microbes. Surprisingly, it did inhibit the growth of pathogenic fungi from the genera Cryptococcus and Aspergillus, and it worked well against the bacterium Staphylococcus aureus. However, it had little effect on other bacteria. Thus, unfortunately, ant honey cannot compare in usefulness to bee honey, which helps fight hundreds of different bacteria. In the Australian town of Yaraka, located in Queensland, there is a single hotel with an unusual sign on its door stating that emus named Kevin and Carol are not allowed inside. This story began in 2018. Until then, the town was home to nine wild emus which were cared for by the local residents. However, for some reason, all the birds except Kevin and Carol left the area. After that, 
the two remaining emus became incredibly spoiled by the attention and kindness of the people. Feeling untouchable, they decided they could do whatever they wanted and chose the cafe at the Yarika Hotel as their favorite place. According to the hotel owner, Jerry Gimblet, the emus visited the cafe daily and behaved terribly. They stole guests' belongings and food, and even defecated inside the establishment. When people tried to shoo them away, the emus responded aggressively and started destroying everything around. For this reason, the hotel owner had to install barriers and put up a note banning the two emus from entering. It's worth noting that emus are very large birds. They can grow up to 190 centimeters in length and weigh up to 55 kilograms. Moreover, these birds are quite intelligent and are very sensitive to how people treat them. Apparently, due to the excessive attention and kindness, this pair decided that all their mischief would be forgiven. Many people spend years searching for the perfect partner for a lifelong relationship, but finding such a person often proves difficult. Jeff Gallagher, a resident of Queensland, never managed to find a beloved woman, so he decided to build a relationship with a robot doll. Ten years after his mother's death, Jeff realized he was extremely lonely, with his only close friend being his dog Penny. One day he came across an article about robots with artificial intelligence. It mentioned that robots had reached a level where they could easily replace a human, which intrigued Jeff. On a website of a robot doll manufacturer, Jeff began looking for a life partner. Among all the options, he liked a blonde with blue eyes named Emma the most. Jeff didn't hesitate to spend the money and bought the doll for 6,000 Australian dollars. He spends hours with his new partner teaching her new words and phrases, taking her for car rides, and even going to restaurants with her. Now Jeff is planning to marry this robot as he is completely satisfied with this relationship. The Yowie is a mythological creature resembling the Yeti, believed in by Australian Aboriginal people. According to descriptions, the Yoey is a human or ape-like creature. Its body is covered in thick dark brown or chocolate-colored fur, and it stands over two meters tall. Unlike the Yeti, this cryptid does not live in snow-covered mountains or dense forests, but in deserts. In the 1970s, an enthusiast cryptozoologist named Rex Gilroy began searching for the Yoey. According to him, the cryptid could be real, as he collected at least 3,000 reports of sightings. However, Gilroy was not entirely sure what the Yoey actually was, an undiscovered species of ape, an unknown type of human, or a genuine monster. Unfortunately, the cryptozoologist himself never managed to meet the Yoey. Interestingly, reports of encounters with this cryptid continue to come from Australia's native people. Most often, people claim that the Yoey attacked livestock and dogs, with these incidents usually occurring at night. Fortunately, there are no records of the monster attacking humans. As we know, fungi represent a separate kingdom of nature that unites eukaryotic organisms, combining traits of both plants and animals. Fungi are truly unique, and some species are so impressive that it's hard to believe their characteristics. One such species is the microscopic fungus Fusarium oxysporum, found in a mine in Western Australia. These fungi can absorb dissolved gold compounds from the environment, process them, and then excrete pure metal. This ability is indeed astonishing. Scientists are now studying these unusual fungi. They don't yet understand why these organisms produce such an unusual pollination. However, experts have a theory about it. They believe that gold is needed by the fungi to improve their life processes and absorb more nutrients. Scientists have noticed that the population of this species grows much faster and more successfully than other fungi in the same mine. In 2017, members of an expedition to the east coast of Australia discovered one of the rarest fish on the planet, known as the faceless fish, or blind Tiflonus. Encounters with this deep-sea dweller have been so rare that they can literally be counted on one hand. This fish was first discovered in 1873 by the crew of the ship Challenger. It was seen once more washed ashore in Papua New Guinea after severe storms. The faceless fish gets its nickname due to its unusual appearance. This fish has no eyes or nose, and its mouth is located at the bottom of its body. 
Most likely, this unique appearance is due to the fact that the species lives at great depths, around 4, 6 kilometers. Unfortunately, the blind Tiflonus remains largely unstudied. Although Australian scientists managed to catch this unusual deep-sea inhabitant for further research, one specimen is not enough. Moreover, studying any animal's behavior requires observing it in its natural habitat. But in this case, the fish is too rare for that. The only thing scientists could notice was that the structure of its pectoral fins closely resembles that of herring fins, but this is not enough to confirm a relationship. In 2022, a fisherman named Trapman Bermagui went out to the Pacific Ocean off the coast of New South Wales, as usual. There, he caught a dead shark that looked like a monster from horror movies. The fisherman was astonished by his catch. The shark had rough skin resembling sandpaper, large bulging green eyes, and an open mouth that looked like it was smiling, revealing sharp teeth. Naturally, the fisherman decided to take a picture of his catch and took several photos. Looking at these photos, researchers at the Marine Laboratory at Florida State University suggested that it might be a gulper shark. These fish live at great depths and are found in all oceans of the world. Because they are deep sea dwellers, their appearance seems horrifying. Almost all such fish look very ugly. Gulper sharks are endangered, which makes encounters with humans nearly impossible. So the Australian fisherman was truly lucky to see this rare species of deep sea shark with his own eyes. In the late 19th century, representatives of the indigenous Gunai Kurnai people from southeastern Australia shared their healing ritual with travelers and colonizers which involved sticks smeared with fat at both ends. The Aboriginal people said that this ritual had been passed down from generation to generation, but even they did not know exactly how many years it had been practiced. In 2020, during excavations in Clogs Cave at the foot of the Victorian Alps, archaeologists discovered two sticks made from casuarina wood, with their ends smeared in fat. Each stick was found in a separate tiny hearth no larger than the size of a human hand. Scientists immediately realized that these hearths were unlikely to have been used for heating or cooking, as they were too small. Most likely, they were used for some ritual, but what kind? Scientists spent almost four years before discovering the records of Australian anthropologist Alfred Howitt, who in the late 19th century had described in detail the healing ritual of the Gunai Kurni people, who still live near the cave where the discovery was made. During this ritual, an object belonging to the sick person was attached to the end of the stick smeared with human or kangaroo fat. The stick was then driven into the ground, and a small fire was lit beneath it. The name of the sick person was repeated, and once the stick fell, the spell was considered complete. Remarkably, radiocarbon dating showed that the sticks found by archaeologists were 11,000 and 12,000 years old. This means that the Gunai Kurnai have been passing down this healing ritual for 12,000 years. It's truly incredible. And that's all for now. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon. Your support means the world to me. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.